Hey, good morning, everybody. It is good to be here on a fabulous Friday morning. We have got a smoking hot, warm weekend coming ahead of us. It's going to be super nice. Today's going to be fabulous. Tomorrow looks like it's going to be 90 something in Pullman and probably pushing 100 down in the canyon. So if, uh, if you don't have any plans to get outside this weekend, you probably should, unless you will melt. So just for fun, uh, as you hear this, whether you're watching it live or on a replay, uh, if you love hot weather, let us know. And if you are like, oh, when it breaks 90, uh, my skin starts to melt off, that's way too hot, let us know. Just for fun, um, just to let us know how you go, how it goes for you. So I'm super looking forward to it. I am going to go melt on the river and catch some fish this weekend and uh, have a great time with... Uh, different friends uh, just reconnecting and connecting with some new friends too so it should be a, an awesome time this morning we're gonna do a little Jesus time together and uh, also gonna share some resources kind of had a few different people asking me about different things that I um, use to study and dig into and learn and um, and so it sort of fit into the lesson this morning so let's uh, jump in we're gonna be in Luke chapter 10 and we are Luke chapter 10. Oh, where are we? Verse 23 through 24 is where we're going to kind of camp out this morning. So let's jump in and read. Um, oh, let me pray. It's Friday. Almost got off track. Let me pray for us and then we'll jump in and read. Father God, we love you. Thanks for your word. Thanks for creation. Thanks for the blessing of uh, enjoying um, just your amazing world out there. Um, it is refreshing and uh, it just makes you feel good when you see uh, a beautiful scene or pretty scenery or, or good weather. It just lifts the spirit and encourages the soul. And so I just uh, pray that that would be the case for many people uh, today and through the weekend. Just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 21. It goes like this. Uh, in the same hour, so he's... He sent out the 72, gave them their instructions. They went out, they tried things out, they came back. Um, he kind of debriefed with them a little bit. And at the end, it says in the same hour. So he's talking to a, a much larger group of disciples here, not just the 12. Uh, in the same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows you, uh, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that, will, uh, that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And so there's a couple things that are kind of neat here um, in that first part. He's talking about um, how he's uh, thanking God that God has chosen to reveal himself um, through Christ and whoever Jesus chooses to open up to and reveal himself to that it's uh, for everybody, like you, people that have like this childlike faith, you know, and it seems like the same thing is true today, and it was even really obvious in their world, but it sort of seems like the general blessings of life tend to uh, fall on people who are really intelligent, really good looking or beautiful, um, tall, you know, like all of the, uh, I don't know, just outward appearance kind of stuff. Um, they're sort of born into it things just seem to fall into their lap you know like and here Jesus is reminding them that that the kingdom of God and knowledge of the father in a relationship and getting to know Jesus is available to everybody it doesn't matter uh, your intelligence level it's not about IQ it's not about what school you went to or what family you were born in or how you were raised or what part of the world you grew up in or your income level like none of that has anything to do with um, qualifying you to um, hear the gospel and to know who the father is by um, first connecting to the son Jesus and so that's kind of a cool thing that he was reminding them then and it's relevant and important to remind us now. Um, 
And then he goes to the disciples and he says, you know, like, he's reminding them, like, blessed are you who are seeing what you're seeing. Like, do you, have, he's kind of like, do you have any idea all of the people, the kings and the prophets and um, the people of old that have wanted to see what you've seen, have, have wanted to have access and, and wondered when this time in history would come. And, and yet here you are like how blessed are you and and it's one of those things that i think um we can see as we kind of watch the interaction between the uh, disciples and jesus especially the larger group of disciples not just the 12 but um oftentimes they would take it for granted i think and and not recognize how significant it was like what an amazing opportunity they had actually like walking and traveling with jesus and learning from him firsthand and and um, just what that would have meant, right? And we can look back on it and, and in hindsight, knowing what we know now and be like, wow, that was, what an opportunity. Like who would be, who'd have been crazy enough not to take full advantage of that? Who would have ever left him, right? Like, but they were like us, they were figuring it out as they went. And so the thing is for us today, we've still got this amazing opportunity. We don't, we don't have the same opportunity that the disciples did, but in, many ways we have um, even a, a better opportunity because we've got uh, 2,000 plus years of church history and research and um, uh, understanding of how different people have uh, come to know and follow Jesus throughout history. We've got the rest of the New Testament that, that we get to look at and learn from. What did it look like when the first people came to put their faith in Christ like when when Christianity opened up to everyone at large like clearly it was a it was a God was making it known that he was a God for everyone like how did that work how did people receive it um, how did people share the gospel message with people who had previously never really been uh, invited in um, and how did they receive it? And how did the old people that were the Jews that were always a part of it? How did that go? And so we get to learn from all of those things. We also have the benefit of, you know, some of the most uh, amazing scholars and teachers and preachers um, and their wisdom and years of experience. And so we can benefit from their study and knowledge. Um, we also have the benefit of tons and tons of resources. Uh, Bibles alone, um, there are so many uh, different Bible translations. Number one, the Bible's translated now into almost every language. I know it's not every language, but nearly every language spoken on the globe has a, a Bible translation and access to the Word of God. In addition to that, the, the Hebrew and Greek words of the original text have been translated into so many different versions that uh, we can glean a lot and learn a lot about the original Hebrew text uh, in our men's group uh, last night. Actually, we had an awesome discussion about Bible translations and Hebrew and English and why there are so many different Bible translations. And that's a whole nother discussion for another day. But the generally just to point out one really important thing in Hebrew, there's uh, approximately 8000 words. In English, there are uh, over a hundred thousand words, and so we have a much greater uh, uh, choice of words than the Hebrew language. In the Hebrew language, words have um, multifaceted meanings, and they they relied on the the context, like what where the word was placed and how it was being used, helped tell you. Um, what that word meant in that sentence or in that use and and so there is this huge variety of translations that are literal word-for-word -word ones or thought-for-thought -thought or meaning-for-meaning -meaning. and and as you study different translations and read different translations it helps it helps us get a rounded out or um, kind of a, a it paints a deeper picture of maybe what the original Hebrew meant and so for uh, with that kind of stuff in mind, I just wanted to share some of my resources. A lot of people have asked me like, well, what do you do to study? And we've got access to all these resources. And in some ways it gets a little overwhelming. Like there's almost too many resources. 
And so where would you even start? And I know a lot of people are nervous about searching stuff on the internet because who knows what you're actually reading and is it correct or not, right? Like all that stuff. So um, here's some of my stuff. Uh, I do uh, ESV um, is my everyday reading Bible, the English Standard Version. And I read a, a version that's just a straight ESV with no commentary so that um, my first look at the text, I try to always just look at the text. And I don't go right into commentary. I try to spend some time and just chew on the text itself. And so then from, a, from the ESV, um, I almost always read two other translations, um, the NIV. Um, and so this is a, a popular NIV, and it's, uh, this one's a life application study Bible. And then uh, NLT, New Living Translation. So I really like it. I'm not saying these are the authoritative three. They're excellent translations, and they provide a, um, kind of a different variants for different reasons. And so the English Standard Version, the uh, NIV, and the NLT are ones I reference often. Um, and then in addition to that, I've got some great study resources that are always out here. Like um, they're either the, the little buffet table behind me is usually covered with them or they're in my office or they're across my kitchen table. But one of the things I reference often is uh, this is my notes from uh, Israel and Turkey. And, and so over the last couple of summers, I had the opportunity to go on a study tour to Israel and Turkey. And so um, that combined with a couple of notebooks I've got, uh, unpack all the lessons that I learned on the spot there. Um, this is another study Bible that's excellent, uh, the archaeological study Bible. And so this um, just gives you a lot of archaeological evidence and neat articles and things that support the text and help you have a lot of really strong, solid evidences. This one is a, a newer uh, Bible that's come out. Uh, I don't even know how, how new it is, but in the last couple of years. Um, and it is called a, a Cultural Background Study Bible. And this is excellent um, for understanding some of the Jewish historical context. Um, and so, um, yeah. So, and speaking of, I'll throw all this stuff in the comments. I'll just, I'll just write all these in there for those of you that are interested in these. So you've got names and titles and stuff. Um, this is another uh, commentary that is outstanding. There's one on the New and the Old Testament uh, by Keener, uh, Bible background commentary. So this is the New Testament one, and it is fantastic. Um, and then the last thing I'll uh, show you is these three right here are outstanding resources. They're um, kind of referred to as the Rabbi Jesus books by uh, Lois Tverberg. There's three books in the series and they unpack a lot of uh, Jewish historical context. Um, they unpack a lot of uh, just brass tacks about what it would have been like to live there when uh, um, when Jesus was there. Why did he teach the way he taught? Helps you understand how to think with an Eastern mindset. Um, and so they're, they're outstanding and they're very, very um, uh, approachable, easy to read regular people books. They're not like reading a Hebrew uh, textbook. Uh, they're very um, everyday person, easy to understand. And so I've found them to be extraordinarily helpful. Um, in our men's group, I've, we've spent the last almost year going through those three books and just, um, every week we do a chapter and we just really pick it apart and study and learn. And then we get together on a Thursday night and we eat dinner together. And then we just dive in and discuss that and just chew on that, uh, those books. And so they've been super helpful. And we were talking last night as we were getting close to finishing up the third one that we may dive back in and read them again. They've been so helpful for us. So those are some of the different resources that I use. Oh, last one is, uh, also if you, uh, you can have you can get these electronically, but uh, I like having a hard copy. The Harmony of the Gospels, and um, and for those of you that are not familiar with what this is, it it breaks down Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and puts them in columns. And so you know whatever it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and in this one there's no John. Um, 
And so what it does is it syncs up anywhere that Matthew wrote about an, uh, uh, an instance. If Mark wrote about it, it's got his right next to it. If Luke also wrote about it, it says what he wrote about it. If no one wrote, you know, if only three of the four wrote about it, then there's three columns. And so it syncs up the different gospel writers so that you can see um, how the different guys had a different perspective. They're writing a little bit different audiences. And then, of course, they're different guys. So they recorded things um, kind of a, a little bit differently in some cases. And so that's been a really, that's a helpful uh, resource as well. So I'll throw all that stuff together in the comments uh, or in the description for this video, just so there's uh, names and authors and all that stuff. Um, and then uh, those are things that, We've got just all these great resources available and I think people get a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and I would say um, there's, as all of you know, there'll be other amazing resources out there and you may have some go-to favorites that you've found really helpful. These are some of my uh, basic everyday tools I use in uh, reading and unpacking the text. So I'll throw that stuff in there. Let's get off and on our way this uh, fabulous Friday. And then uh, I'll see everybody back here Monday morning for some Jesus time at 8. Everybody have a great weekend. And uh, Lord willing, I'll have an Instagram full of uh, world-size bass. Um, I don't know if I will or not, but I'm sure going to have some fun. So you guys have some fun this weekend, and uh, we'll see you Monday morning. Let me pray for us. Father God, we love you, and we just thank you so much for the text, for all of these amazing resources, for the brilliant scholars that have had um, training and have just this deep passion to help people understand you and the world that you um, uh, entered into and how you taught and what it meant. And um, it just helps us uh, so much when people uh, pour their heart and soul into that and then make it available to us for, for 10 or 15 bucks. We get access to uh, a life's journey oftentimes for some people. And so thanks for that, Lord. And help us not take for granted the amazing access we have to so much uh, of those types of things. So God, continue to grow us, help us to become more like you and uh, spur us on to be uh, doers of what we're learning, um, not just uh, learners. And so we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Everybody have a fabulous weekend. See you on Monday.